Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your 18th AngularJS tutorial and in this video we're going to go ahead and create a custom directive. Wow! Right then dogs, so we've seen quite a lot of directives already, uh, things like ng-click, ng-rep, ng-source, ng-show, etc. And they've all kind of got one thing in common and that is they direct Angular to do something or other. So there's quite a lot of directives in Angular that we can use for tons of different things. But if we want something extra, uh, some kind of functionality which is just going to be unique to this application, then we can go ahead and just create our own directive to handle that functionality. All right. Now, I said in a previous tutorial that directives can come in the form of these things right here, attributes on an element, or they could be uh, an element in themselves. So I could create a directive called Ninja and just have it as an element. And then whenever I write this attribute, uh, not attribute, this directive, then something cool is going to happen. All right. So that's what I'm going to do in this tutorial. I'm going to create a directive which is going to be used as an element. And then when that element is used in your HTML, something is going to happen on the page. And the thing that I want to happen is to display a random ninja on the home page right here every time you refresh. OK, so to do that, I'll get rid of that right there. We'll go into our home view and we're just going to pop the directive underneath that h1 so i'll open my tag and this directive is going to be called no i'll call it random ninja like that and notice there's a hyphen between the two words right there whenever there's a space in your directive if it's more than one word use a hyphen in the html that's kind of angular's way of doing things and then when we uh, define this directive in the app code then it's going to be in camel case and i'll show you that in a second all right, then. so first of all, this random ninja is going to show a random ninja right here on the home page. Now, for it to do that, it needs to have access to our ninja data. Now, currently, this home view doesn't have access to any of that data whatsoever because there's no controller controlling it and there's no data being fed into it on the scope object, right? If we take a look in the app.js where we wrote this controller, you can see we go out and grab all the data within this controller, this Ninja controller. And the reason we have access to that data in the direct review is because when we set up our routes, we gave that directory view there a Ninja controller. So this is controlling this view. So therefore we have access to that scope object with all the Ninja data on it that we get in the controller. Now, because this doesn't have a controller associated with it, we don't get any of that data. So we could do two things here. We could go ahead and create a home controller and then go out and reach for that data again within the home controller and pass that through here. Or for simplicity's sake, we could just pass in the Ninja controller to control this uh, view as well, which is what I'm going to do for this tutorial. You might not do it in your real life projects, but I'm doing it here. So controller is going to be Ninja controller. And now we have access to all of that data in the home view and I can demonstrate that just by typing out an expression and getting the ninjas object which remember is stored on the scope which we, how, uh, which we now have access to. So if I save this now it should output all of that ninja data right here and yeah it looks an absolute mess but you get the point we've got access to that data now. So now we're going to be able to use that data in this directive because we're going to pass some data through to that in a bit. All right. OK, then. so now we've done our directive in the HTML. We need to go into the JavaScript and define the directive there and decide what it's going to do, what kind of functionality. So let's go ahead to the app and we define it similarly to the, this uh, controller here. So we'll just say my ninja app dot directive and then we pass through a name. I remember I said that in the JavaScript we do it camel case. That's the way we do everything in the JavaScript side of things. So in the home view, it says random hyphen ninja. That just turns to a random uppercase ninja like that. OK, so that's the name of our directive. And now whenever Angular sees this directive right here, it's going to jump over here and look for this directive to see what it does. OK, 
So again, like in the controller, we pass through our dependencies and functions. So we'll open our square brackets and close them. And now there's not going to be any variables that I'm going to pass through like this one here. I don't need them in this directive, but I am going to pass through the function. So we'll do that right now. And then within this function is where all the magic is going to happen. So when we do a directive, what we need to do inside it is return an object. This is the way we do things. So I'm just going to return an empty object for now. And then within this object, this is where we kind of define all of our different properties and control our functionality of this directive. And we're going to return all that functionality every time this directive is called in the HTML, right? So the first thing we want to do is call the restrict property. And this is how we restrict our directive to be used in a certain way. So we can restrict it to be um, one of four letters, and they are A, E, C, and M. Now, we're just going to look at E and A. And E stands for element. And if we put an E here, it means that we can only use our directive in the HTML as an element in this form right here, which we're doing, right? If I put in an A, it means we can only use it as an attribute much like these things right here, okay? So we're restricting the directive to a certain form. But if we want to use them both, we could do EA, and now we can use them as an element or an attribute, okay? The other two, incidentally, are C and M, and uh, they're to do with classes and comments. But we're not going to cover those. That's kind of legacy stuff. So we'll just stick to E for now for this. So we're restricting our directive to be used only as an element, okay? Now, the next thing I want to do is define the scope property and this is where we're going to pass data through into this directive now what we're doing here is we're actually creating what's known as an isolate scope which essentially means the directive has its own scope it's not the same as the scope outside in this home remember we're getting this scope from the ninja controller right and what we're going to do is we're going to get the data off that scope object and we're going to map it onto the isolate scope here. So they're not the same scope, they're different, but we're taking data from the controller scope in the home view, and we're gonna map that and put it into this isolate scope right here. So it has its own scope, right? So this, we pass through an object, and within this object is where we add uh, different key value pairs to give this scope um, some data, essentially. So the first thing I wanna give this is the array of ninjas. I want access to all of those ninjas because we're just gonna choose a random one and then output it on the page. So to get that, we need to pass it through in this directive right here, right? So remember before, I did an expression and we could access that ninjas data, right? Which is on the scope. And if I save that, you can see it all outlined there. It's all on the, uh, the home page. but I don't wanna do that. I wanna pass this object right here into here. And to do that, what I'll do is just create an attribute called ninjas, right? And then I'll set it equal to that object, which is ninjas. Okay, so I'm telling the directive, look, I'm going to pass through an attribute called ninjas, so you can have access to that. And within that attribute, I'm going to store this object. I'm going to pass through that ninjas object so you can get it. Okay, so I'll save that. And then over here, to access that, what we need to do is write ninjas, because that's going to be our property on the scope. And then we just set that to be an equal sign. And this kind of means that it's binding the data together. We're binding one value to another, okay? So now it's gonna look for this property or this attribute on here, which it finds. And then it's gonna set that attribute that on here, this property to this thing right here, this object, okay? So now we've got access to it in scope.ninjas. All right, now we want another thing as well, and this is just gonna be a title. And what I'm gonna do is in the home, set another attribute called title, and I'm gonna set that equal to random. In fact, we need to put this in another set of quotations, and I'll tell you why in a second. Let's set that equal to random ninja, okay? Now, in this example, I'm passing through a JavaScript object, so we don't need to put that in quotations. Here, I'm passing through a string, not a JavaScript object. And so because it's a string, I need to pass it through in additional quotations. And I'm using single ones so we don't escape these double ones right here. All right. So now we've got access to that as well on the scope right there. 
All right then, so next thing we wanna do is create a controller. And within that controller, let me just go onto the next line like that. Within that controller, we're gonna pass through a function and then we have access to the scope in this directive. So we can pass that dependency right through here like that. Okay, because we're gonna use it in our controller in a minute, but for now, We'll come back to this control in a second. What I'm gonna do is make the template of this directive. And to do that, we need a property called template, yeah? And then basically, every time this directive is called in the HTML, it's gonna find this directive in the JavaScript there, and it's gonna look for this template, and it's gonna output whatever's in this template in the HTML or on the page, okay? So let us do something like this. Let us output just to see if it works, the title, because now we have access to that on the scope, yeah? So let us output that, put the comment at the end, or the comma rather, and if we save, now we can see the title is being output to that page. But let's do something a bit better, let's get rid of the title, let's output an image tag, and then the ng-source is gonna be equal to, and then what I wanna do is say it's equal to ninjas, which is that object right there, that array of ninjas, and we're gonna grab one of those ninjas, it's just gonna be the first one so far, and we wanna get the thumb property on that ninja, because if we look in our data, the thumb property right there is the path to that picture. So what we're passing through in the source attribute right there is the path to the picture. So then we've got an image tag with that source. So now, let's close that off like that and save it, Hopefully we should get that picture right there, and it's Yoshi, the first one. But we want this to be random. We don't just want it to be Yoshi every time. So this is where we can control that functionality within this controller. So what I'm gonna do is a little bit of math. I'm gonna say scope, and then just make a property called random. Okay, and this is gonna be a random number, and it's gonna be a random number between zero and three, because zero is the first ninja in our array which is, if we have to take a look, Yoshi. Then we've got zero, one, two, and three. So it's gonna be a number between zero and three, right? And then what's gonna happen is we're gonna pass that number through into here, all right? So we're gonna generate a random number, pass that number through into here every time this page or this view loads so that we get a different ninja every time. So scope.random equals, and then we're gonna use the math function in JavaScript, dot floor, which is just gonna, instead of round up, round the number down. So if we have 3.7, it's gonna round it down to three. Or if we have 1.5, it's gonna round it down to, uh, to one. Okay, and then we're gonna floor math.random, and dot random just returns a number between zero and one, like 0 0.5 or something like that. And then we're gonna times that by four. And that's gonna give us a random number there between zero and three. So now we've got scope.random there, and we can pass this random pro uh, property on the scope object now here, like that. So if we save it now, every time we refresh over here, we get a random ninja like that, okay? Pretty cool, yeah? All right then, so instead of having a template pretty simple like this, I wanna do something a little bit more complex. Uh, now, instead of writing it all within this string right here, what we can do is supply a template URL much like we did over here with a view, and we can put a little bit more complex code in that view, so to speak, okay? So let's get rid of this right there, and we'll call this template URL instead. And what we're gonna do is create a, um, a HTML document in there. So we'll pass through views forward slash, and then we'll call it random.html, okay? And then it's gonna look for that template and it's gonna output that instead. So let's save that and create it over here. New file, random.html. And then within here we can do whatever we want. We can output that kind of template. So same thing again, I'm gonna do an image with a source equal to, and it's gonna be that thing again. We're gonna output this expression, which is gonna be ninjas, random, like that and then dot thumb, and then let's just close that image right off like that, save it, and then see what it does over here. Now we're getting that random image, but don't forget we also had 
this other property right here that we have access to. So I'm going to put that above it as well. So I'll just say, um, we'll call it H4, and we'll output the title like that. Okay, random ninja. And then what I'm going to do is create a div right here. And I'm just going to pass it through a little style like that. And I'll say text align center like that. And we'll close the div off right at the end. And that's just going to make this look a little bit better in the browser. So now it's centralized instead. And we'll go to the home page and we'll just do the same for this. We'll say uh, style equals text align center. Okay. All right, cool. And now we have that random ninja right there. Every time we refresh, we get a different random ninja. Okay. Pretty cool, yeah? So, I mean, that's how we create directives. Just quickly, once again, what we've done is we've created a directive right here in the element form and we use this hyphen whenever we have a space, right? Then in the application, we've done myninjaapp.directive to create a new directive and we've named that the same as what we've named it here, except instead of a hyphen, we've used camel case. Then we've passed through any dependencies we need. We've not needed any here, but if we did, we'd pass them through into this array along with your function. Inside the function, we return an object, and this is where we pass through all the properties of this directive, which is gonna control it. We first restricted it to elements only. Then we added this scope property, and we grabbed this data from the um, these attributes right here, okay? Then after that, we supplied a template URL, which is in views forward slash random. And within there, we output that data like that. And then finally, we add the controller where we pass through this scope object. We added a property to that scope called random to get a random number, which we pass through into this thing right here, this array. So it brings out a random ninja every time. Okay. So that's, uh, that's directives, guys. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave those down below. We are going to kind of add to this a little bit in the next tutorial. I just want to show you a couple more things, but uh, I think I want to stop that one here for now. So, yeah, any questions so far, ask them below. Otherwise, don't forget to share, subscribe, and like, all that kind of stuff, and I'll see you guys in the very next tutorial.